Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leili, and I work in NHS commissioning. And I need a tool to help me decide where to put new services or centers for services, which are based on needs, greatest impact, and data. So we decided today to focus on cataract services, and in particular cataract surgery, because of Mary. Mary is an NHS patient who had to wait for 12 months to get a cataract surgery, which resulted in a vision uh, impairment uh, and deterioration and made Mary's life absolutely dependent on her carer. But this is, this is all preventable. So I'm Lana, I'm an ophthalmologist, I'm a clinician. Um, cataract surgery is the most widely performed surgery in the UK and um, in England, over 400,000 operations per year. It's responsible for a third of um, visual impairment in elderly patients, and the demand is growing every year. So in this map on the left is the um, Royal College of Ophthalmology um, mapping for cataract demand in the next um, 30 years, the deeper blue corresponding to greater demand in different regions of England. On the right, um, this is the deprivation map from the government website, and as you can see, there is um, a deeper blue a correlation in certain parts of the um, England, so down southwest and also northeast regions. <coughs> And we also want to incorporate sort of patient experience, so the time to the nearest NHS hospital uh, versus the waiting times that patients are waiting, which varies across um, the, the, um, the regions. Um, this is the current provision, so these the dots in blue are the current NHS cashback centres. And more recently, we have private providers also providing services to um, um, for NHS patients, but as you can see, they are clustered around the similar areas, similar urban centres, um, and not in keeping with the areas that we've identified with the greatest demand and deprivation. So, how do we make a decision where to put a centre for cataract surgery, which will have the greatest impact uh, and it will be a resource um, efficient? So we put together a team to help me make this decision, and the team consists of uh, commissioners, data scientists, and then the engineering um, uh, experts, clinicians, patients. We even had a patient on, on our team. Uh, and we're presenting today our solution, a holistic and interactive model to all allocate cataract services centers uh, across England. And basically, this model is overlaying all of these maps that we showed you previously on the previous slides and making it interactive and a little bit like uh, Google Maps uh, where you want to track the little person and calculate how much time it will take to get from here and there. I'll be able to see, uh, and all commissioners in the NHS will be able to see uh, if we put a center here, how does this impact waiting times or how does this impact, um, let's say, access to services. So I'll hand over to Ed who will explain more about the prototype. Thank you, so I'm Ed Hodgkinson, I'm a data engineer. So here we have a map uh, from our sort of prototype app that just shows uh, where our current hospitals are and the average waiting time in those areas. So here we've got a snapshot of Cornwall and Southwest where we've got a, a very rural and aging population and they also have uh, quite high waiting times. Uh, we've got a lot more data that we want to start incorporating in terms of uh, travel time to these current existing centers and uh, deprivation in these areas. Um, and we're starting to build our interactivity and the ability to see what things would look like with a new center in a particular spot or on different populations. Uh, we would love, in terms of our challenges, we'd love the NHS to make more of this data public and available. Um, so we're approaching this from an open data perspective. Um, there's data that's only been available from FOIs from a few years ago, so uh, it's data that we know that NHS England has, and getting access to more of it would be great. Thank you, Ed. It's amazing that a tool like this is starting to, to, to be developed, and um, we'll be able, with the drag of the mouse around the map, to locate center here or center there, and to, and to see how, for example, waiting times decline or how travel times are affected. So it, it's wonderful. And just to say that this solution has uh, the potential for a huge impact 
for decision uh, makers at any level, NHS, national NHS, regional NHS, social uh, um, care, health care, wide application across the board for any NHS services really. And in terms of next steps, today we're pitching and raising the profile of, of, the, of the model, the next three months we are Okay, thank you. Uh, something's going on in the background. Right, are there any questions? Maybe no, we relate. Just up the app. You just, have you just pulled up the app? Yeah. I see. Okay, any questions? Bear in mind there's an app on the screen. <laughs> I was going to ask to see the app, so I can't get a chance to get it up. Is, is the, just to make sure I'm probably understood the proposition, is this, is this presenting information or is it also about a degree of predictive analytics yeah. and suggestion built in? Currently, it's just data, but the aim goal is to do predictive analytics. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, does this consider the DM01 data set of electric care regulation times? Did you consider the DM01 data of electric oh, yes. airway clients? Yeah. So this is all based on publicly available data from the NHS. But this is, this is quite complex. It took us a lot of time. So all we achieved today was through the NHS datathon. We didn't do anything outside of this datathon. And it took a lot of effort because region, you don't have the key, key codes in any of the data. So you have to do a lot of data transformation around regions, not a geolocation to be able to build a map like this. So you have to you have to understand what is achievable in a period of time like this, and I think actually we're, I'm very proud as a team to be to achieve like something like this, and you know she can use it on her day-to-day -day yeah. job. Yes, this is this is just amazing for two days to be able to do that, and, and for me to be able to see, for example, here five months waiting time. Um, quite the private area on top of this, uh, many people over 65, so definitely, and lack of provision, definitely we need a center in here, and I can base this on actual data. Uh, it's just, do you envision this more uh, north of sort of central, uh, and it's just England kind of policy making? Or, because currently if I'm a GP, and I have, you know, patient's choice, ERS, and what's presented to me is like, oh, okay, this, Two hospitals within my reach, one has six weeks waiting time, one has 20 weeks. I'm going to push my patients to my six weeks. So do you, uh, would this help, do you, do you envision this to be available to GPs as well? Yeah. And patients in the public? Yeah, de definitely. This, this should be available, this should be open, available to, uh, in the future, to any, any NHS organization, to GPs, to local authorities. Especially if we're working towards an integrated care system kind of context where we all work together, trust local authorities, NHS, academia, uh, to deliver population health management kind of uh, agenda. Um, and also the, uh, the travel map would be helpful for patients. Yeah. Also mm -hmm. With the radius. Yeah, basically. How are we doing on time? Uh, one more minute. One more minute. A quick question? Go on, chat it, quick start. Go. Go. Um, as someone helping to reduce the waiting list, I work in central London, waiting list from Essex patients coming to me. So isn't this more likely to be, I mean, we're not going to expand the NHS. So the question is really whether this can divert resources to, is that actually what your app is going to be more useful for this data mining? Diverting resources. Yes, I don't know. It, 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 it visualises where the demand is going to be. But also we found that even within London there are pockets of demand and deprivation. And so it's not just a case of only moving out of the urban centres into the rural areas. Um, it's, it's very variable patterns. And I think um, without this tool, it's very difficult to, to get the big, a sense of the big picture. 